Go ahead. You want me to start? Yeah. All right. What's up, everybody? We're taking a little break here in the middle of the day, and we're going to talk about our top three calling tips for killing turkeys. Yeah. A lot of them might be kind of overlooked, but the first one is the three note yelp. That is one that I use a lot uh, at different times throughout the hunt, and I guess we can kind of demonstrate that on different calls and whatnot but a lot of people put a mouth call in or grab a box call or whatever and they'll just yelp like this and they'll just crank out like five to ten notes all at once but if you listen to turkeys hens jakes gobblers alike oftentimes they'll just yelp like two three four times mm -hmm. and that's worked well for me especially whenever turkeys get in close because as they're coming in and you've got your gun pointed at that turkey that's gobbling and he's getting closer and closer to your setup, a lot of people have been taught to lay off the call as they're coming in. I think just the opposite. I want my bead to be right on his head when he pops up into view. So what I'll do a lot of times as they're coming in, even when they're only 40, 50 yards away and they're just out of sight, is I'll hit them with a little three note yelp and I'll just try to keep them gobbling. Maybe they'll gobble one more time. I mean, that example that we had from that hunt the other day, mm -hmm. that bird pitched down and he was gobbling at 75, 80 yeah. yards. As he was coming in, he gobbled again at like 60 yards, but he's still 20, 30 yards away from coming into view for me. Mm -hmm. I just hit him with this little, calc almost like a jake calc or a three note yelp like there was a what i would call a hen yelp like mm -hmm. that three notes and then there's a gobbler yelp on the back end but a lot of times i'll do that just to get him to gobble so that i can hear where he's at and, and i can reposition my gun mm -hmm. that's killed a lot of turkeys over and the he years did. he gobbled right there just on the other side and then immediately popped his head up so you knew exactly where he was going to come up at yeah if you're not using a decoy and that thing pops up into view and you're just sitting there quietly and you don't hear him walking like this morning those leaves were wet mm -hmm. you wouldn't have heard a turkey coming in if you're pointed at the last gobble and he doesn't show up for several minutes who knows he may swerve you and pop up on over top of the ridge over here and look straight at you and then you're you're toast because he's looking at your setup broadside and by the time you try to swing over there and shoot him it's all over with mm -hmm. so by continuing to call to him at least a little bit and keeping him gobbling you can keep repositioning your gun and then right right before i shoot him turkeys are they're always bobbing their heads and they're shifty in nature as it is yeah so i like to yelp at them just three four times just to grab their attention maybe to get them to stop put their head up mm -hmm. and give me like two or three seconds to shoot at a static target and that's helped me tremendously over the years yeah. um, when it comes to shooting and actually killing the turkey because uh, you know if you don't do that and they're just bobbing through there that's hard to hit, especially with a tight pattern at 20, 30 yards. You're trying to shoot a moving target through brush and trees and everything. And we've had to do that on all three turkeys we've killed so far this year. Yes, that's that's Every a good point. And yours was a good example of that because like mm -hmm. he's bobbing, moving quickly through yep. the woods and then all of a sudden y'all called, boom, raises his head up, static target, boom, smashed. Keith all, did the same thing for that youth hunter that we were with. That's right, because that, the first gobbler came through and then the second one come through and he stopped him where he could, where he could have just an extra second or two to get the bead on him. Getting him to gobble over just hearing them drum or walking in the leaves though it's like it's hard to get an exact pinpoint on the first two i mentioned but if they gobble i feel like you generally can get a really accurate read on where they're at and mm -hmm. get like you said your barrel pointed right where they're about to pop up which is a lot easier to make the shot if you don't have to swing your gun yeah and it's that same three note yelp that i just did i mean I, that's one reason why i always have a mouth call in yep. i might not have called the turkey in with a mouth call might have called him with the, in with the crystal call or you might have called him in from behind or whatever mm -hmm. but i want to have that thing in and if i don't have one in i'll just do it with my mouth i'll just go <laughs> like that just to get him to yeah and then smash him but that three note gel, Jake Yelp is also a good one to throw into your repertoire, if you will, when it comes to calling turkeys in. Because you, we've been dealing with a lot of Jakes this year and you can hear these Jakes and other gobblers answer that mm -hmm. gobbler that they're with. A lot of times that gobbler will strut or he'll gobble and then you'll hear crawl, crawl, crawl. To make that gobbler Yelp on this call, I'm yelping out the left side of the call. So the opening is on the right side, the cut side right here. 
and that's where I'm getting that higher pitch hen note. That's mm -hmm. where I'm getting the hen yelping, that's where I'm getting the kiki, -ki. that's where I'm getting like those soft bubble clucks and stuff and those soft purrs. Sometimes I'm yelping out of the middle of the call, sometimes I'm yelping out the right side to sound like a hen, but when I'm gobbler yelping, I'm yelping out the left side. That's that side with that overhang mm -hmm. on that latex on the top. <laughs> I can hear you can kind of see where my lips are if you look close. You can... Right side, left side. Would you say you're pushing your air any differently for the gobbler call? Or you're just doing pretty a similar. Side? Pretty similar air going over both sides and even down the middle. It's just you're moving the air over a different portion of that reed on top and that's why i like that that combo cut i i mean you've got the alpha right there and it's a similar cut this is the echo and it's just a hybrid combo cut it's mm -hmm. a slightly different call but it's the same type of configuration yeah. so the left side of that call you should be able to get raspier cutting louder yelping more raspier yelping the right side you should be able to get higher pitch tones mm -hmm. and kind of use that to sound like different turkeys or you can use that to uh, i mean in this instance you're using it to sound like a male bird versus a female bird all right so that's the first tip three note yelp the second one is locating turkeys and there's a bunch of different ways to do this we could probably do a whole video just on locating turkeys but a lot of folks have seen us doing these owl hoots and we get lots of questions about the owl hoot we did a video not too long ago right here on the channel where we, we talked about how we do that owl scream and that owl hoot that's one thing that we locate with all the time another thing you can locate with is a crow why don't you show them what that sounds like nicholas so being from where I'm from, we don't have a whole lot of owls, so I just always grew up using a crow call instead of you know learning to owl hoot or even having an owl call or anything. And that seems to be what most people do is just carry around a crow call. But here's what it sounds like. And you're blowing that with back pressure like yeah. you would with a duck call, yeah, right? Yeah, just like a duck call, just straight from your diaphragm, real hard, short burst of air. And to get like a higher pitch, I've kind of bite down on the the mouthpiece of it here, I guess, to constrict that reed and it gets a higher tone. And then for a deeper, kind of gravelly, more raspy sound, you don't bite down. I blow just more with my cheeks over the whole opening of the call to get it a little more raspier. <laughs> I get it though. It sounds good. Yeah. The main thing we're going to talk about here with locating is high pitch. That's yeah. the, those are the two words we're going to use a lot. It's got a little bit of breeze today when we're locating. We're trying to, most of the time, we're trying to strike turkeys from a distance. We're trying, and they're on the ground a lot of times when we're locating in midday. So we need stuff that's high pitch, like a crow call or like an owl scream or whatever. We also will locate first thing in the morning, often with the owl scream or last light, like a couple of days ago when we killed that turkey, we roosted in the night before with an owl scream or just an owl hoot. And that's just that high pitch scream carries further through the woods a lot of time. <coughs> and it's the very end of that scream that's when i'm putting the most pressure on my vocal cords and that's the one that's that few notes towards the mm -hmm. end of that that's really carrying and if i can hear that echoing off of ridges or something then i know that it's traveling the distance it mm -hmm. needs to if you're out hooting just like hear how that doesn't carry through the woods yeah you got to remember the owl's 20 30 feet up in a tree and he may out hoot with that same volume but he's got the ability to sit up high and to cast that sound you're on the ground and, and amongst all this thick vegetation so you might just pick up the volume put a little more air behind it hear how that one kind of mm -hmm. travels through there a little bit further yeah. That's going to help you locate more turkeys at a distance because you're getting that high pitch note, just like you did whenever you bit down on that crow mm -hmm. call. Yeah. You got that high pitch note and that's going to cut through the woods. Another one we'll use is a coyote howl and you can buy coyote howlers. They work great. Um, we, we don't use them near as often, but when I can't, if I'm roosting turkeys in the evening and I can't get one to gobble mm -hmm. at a turkey call or an owl call, a lot of times I'll coyote howl. And that coyote howl really goes a long way through the woods. Just making sure.
sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one almost rings your ears when you do it, but you can get even louder with an actual coyote howler. Uh -huh. It's not something that we use all the time. You don't hear us use it that often, but it's nice to have in your bag of tricks to pull out if nothing else is working. The other thing that we do use all the time, you guys see us running these crystal calls nonstop. These are killer for locating turkeys, especially up in the day when you get some wind, you know, you're dealing with lots of rolling terrain and you're trying to get something that, that sound, you want that sound to penetrate those woods a good ways. Mm -hmm. And with a mouth call, I mean, if you just go back in the woods, maybe we'll do this in a minute where y'all can understand what I'm talking about here. You just go back in the woods and blow a mouth call as hard as you can point it the other direction, 50, 60 yards away, you ain't gonna be able to hear it in there as well. Because that sound is coming out of one spot right in front of your face. And a lot of people will put their hand up to their mouth and that directs the sound. That's what a mouth call is very handy for sometimes because you know you can direct the sound in the, in the mm -hmm. spot where you want a turkey to go. Yeah. But if you're trying to locate a bird 360 degrees around you and your mouth calling like this, like you can just probably tell by when I turn and talk, you probably can't hear me near as well when I'm turning over here. It's the same thing with a mouth call. With one of these, that sound is going everywhere. And it is really, really loud. That's why we like the crystals especially, is because I feel like a crystal call, I love slates and aluminums too, but a crystal call, we can get soft with it if you just cover the ports on the bottom but you can get really loud with it if you open those things up. What we're trying to sound like is a hen cutting, very excited, with throwing in some excited yelps with it, like those, those turkeys we called in the other day. We yelped and they started pop, 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 and yep. they did that for 10 or 15 minutes, back and forth. I mean, it was a lot of calling. So don't be afraid to get the volume up and get the you know excitement up whenever you're doing this because that's natural. Mm -hmm. I mean, when turkeys are trying to find each other in the middle of the day after they've flown down and sort of the flocks busted up a little bit, they will get loud and aggressive, no matter public, private, pressured, whatever. And this is what we're doing a lot of time. I mean, this is, I'll just kind of run through a typical strike session, if you will, whenever we're trying to locate a bird. Start off kind of soft. Three, four note yelp. Listen. You can hear how I'm picking up mm -hmm. that volume and aggression as the as I'm going. Yeah. And towards the end of that, I mean, when you hear a hen cutting, sometimes she's just she's just popping once. Well, you're supposed to hit it. Walking through the woods, but more often it's at two or three notes. It's just that pop pop. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah. You know, and there's gaps in between mm -hmm. that. Because she's listening. She's trying she's to hear listening. that response. And, and then when she doesn't, she just keeps on going. I think that's really important because you, if especially if you're running a call that's that loud, if you're just calling nonstop, you're not going to hear the bird gobble if he's way off. That's like, right. Yeah. That, that happens a lot to us. It's like we got two people there, but the person that's back behind is just like, yeah, he cut you off. But you, the person calling might not have any mm -hmm. idea that it's turkey gobble. Yeah. yeah, and we hear more of them whenever we spread out like that. When the person calling gets like 20, 30 yards out in front, where that sound is a little bit further away from the ears of the rest of the guys. And then they can hear what happens while they're calling in case the caller misses it. But you can hear those pauses in there. Might pick up the intensity a bunch and then lay off of it for like three, four, five seconds. And that's just to be able to catch a gobble in the distance. Yep. And we're throwing yelps in there. One, two, listen, listen. Listen, move. And then you're listening again. You, you wanna wait, you wanna give that little gap in there and also you'll see us moving like that often. That is to sound like a hen that's moving and searching. When a turkey hears that, 
that I mean that sounds realistic to a gobbler in the distance mm -hmm. because that's usually what they're doing they're not they don't sit there in one spot and just call forever they're they're moving around I mean a turkey is fidgeting around and bobbing yeah. around especially when they're looking for another one and they're calling like that but man that thing has struck a lot of turkeys y'all killed your bird because of mm -hmm. a glass call Ted and Ted's that. too oh yeah that's right Ted hit his with a what was that like a five six note yelp yep that was the first time i hit it yeah spot. that's exactly why you start off soft like that you start off with that little mm -hmm. just like a medium tone and that's what you did on your bird and pow, he yep. answered because you don't want to blow their hat off either yep. right you don't want to in case they're just over the lip or mm -hmm. something you want it to sound like a real turkey and you want that sound to go far enough where they mm -hmm. can hear it but you basically cover your bases inside of 100 yards first with that soft call and then yep. you start really projecting that sound out there i'm doing that by just putting more pressure on the striker on the surface when you pull that pressure off mm -hmm. Here, that still yeah. sounds realistic, but you don't hear that high pitch yeah. sound piercing through it's not the ringing through there. right. It's not ringing through there. Yeah, that thing's awesome though. So that's tip number two on locating birds, and tip number three might be the most important one, or one of the most important ones, and that's scratching and soft calling. We kill a pile of them doing just that. Mm -hmm. And we've got a bunch of footage that Ted filmed from the other day when those two jakes and those two hens came in the day before we killed my bird. Mm -hmm they were doing a pile of scratching in that bottom and we could hear those things scratching from 150, 200 yards away in the bottom. I mean, it was that loud. I'd say if there was a number one call for hung up turkeys, that would be it. Cause That's like, it. they're yeah. within, you know, however many yards usually if they can hear the scratching and they're just waiting to hear something else and a lot of times that's just going to be what yeah, seals the deal just some them. added realism mm -hmm. oh yeah they're, that's what they're hearing all the time especially if they're in the timber mm -hmm. in the hardwoods and they're scratching around for acorns like that yep. spot we found this morning if a turkey comes up on that ridge we were on this morning just out of sight 60 70 yards away and we start <sighs> raking those leaves aside yep. you got to think about the pattern of which turkeys are scratching though it's if you really listen close you can that sound is very distinct in the woods many times we've walked up on a group of turkeys and found them just by hearing that scratching mm -hmm. most of the time it's just that two sweeps it's just and then a turkey picks his head up make sure he's safe pecks head up pecks and it's just rinse and repeat yeah but the other stuff that we work in with that to add more realism is in soft bubble clucks and yelps and i want you to do that little yelp on that alpha because that thing sounds really realistic those little bubble clucks and you mix mix scratching in with that yep yep That little three or four note yelp right there, that's only traveling 70 or 80 yards through the woods. But they can hear that, and man, I mean, they'll crawl all over it sometimes when they're just right over mm -hmm. the lip. Yeah. That's, you work even those if they two. don't gobble, especially in more pressured areas, you'll just hear them drum back mm -hmm. at it, like they'll yep. answer with just spitting and drumming. It's that's yep. right, you gotta sweet. be listening for that too. But that that's a killer call, scratching in the leaves, don't ever, underestimate how good that works we have killed turkeys by scratching alone sometimes not calling at all Zach killed that georgia bird a few years ago and i don't even think they called mm -hmm. i think they just got tight to that turkey off the roost when you me and brody killed in iowa that time we were trying to move down in on him he heard us walking down through there and just come to check us out we yep. heard him drum he came straight down at us mm -hmm. yeah and that's all we did we were just walking through the leaves mm -hmm. sounding like what he must have thought was another turkey mm -hmm. and he came in there to investigate so that's the top three took me a while to get through them there i get kind of long-winded because i get excited talking about turkey i think calls. it's good stuff especially the scratching it's gonna i mean you don't have to be a good turkey caller at all you just got to get them to get within your side of that and mm -hmm. like that can close them a lot of times seems yep. like try to sound like real turkeys in the woods i mean you don't have to have the perfect tone or pitch with your calling just sound just match their rhythm hopefully those tips help you all out we appreciate you watching we're gonna head back to the woods yep <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep.